Hi, I'm Gunnery Sergeant R. Lee Ermey. On November 11th, all over this nation, people celebrate Veterans Day with parades, barbecues, maybe even a sale down at the mall. Americans have been observing November 11th for nearly a century now, so long that some of us have actually lost sight of exactly who a veteran is and why we honor them. A veteran is a person who serves in the United States Army or Navy, or Marines, Air Force, Coast Guard. Everybody having fun? We play at our shows for, for veterans. They're serving for our, our, our beliefs and our rights, and that's amazing stuff. To me, a veteran is someone who has served our country as a patriot and as a privilege, not just a job. It's a person with character. A veteran is anyone who served their country. It doesn't have to be during time of war. It's those people who have given a portion of their life and service to our country so that we can have the freedoms we have. Freedom! America is a land populated by people of many colors, creeds, ethnic backgrounds, and religions. But there is one common characteristic that we all share. We all want to be free. Freedom lets you decide who you are. Without freedom, you're not much of an individual. It is precisely because our nation stands for freedom that in America, all dreams are possible. Freedom isn't free. Someone's gotta pay the price. Someone's gotta protect uh, the freedoms that we have. Throughout American history, whenever this nation has been threatened, Brave servicemen and women have always been willing to step forward. Most recruits begin their active duty while they are young, many still in their teens. This has been the case as far back as the Revolutionary War, when the United States first won independence from the British. Our regiment lay on the ground all night. The British moved against us the next afternoon. They drove us into a creek where some were drowned, but we rose together and drove them back. I cannot speak for the others, but I will do my duty as well as I am able, and trust the outcome to Providence. Joseph Plum Martin, 20 years old. Nearly 100 years later, during the Civil War, young soldiers, though extremely proud and courageous, also expressed feelings of apprehension and homesickness. They mean us to begin the charge at first light. Some of the boys are laughing and saying how we're going to run over the Yanks, but I confess I am not as sure. But I am proud to be with such as these and am resolved to my duty. What I wouldn't give to be sleeping home in my own bed tonight. Billy Craig, 17. In World War I, also known as the Great War, fought in Europe at the beginning of the 20th century, America and her allies defeated the forces of the German Empire. Walked six miles before daylight and went in the trenches. They are filthy as anything and stink horrible. The cold wind blows the stink of dead Hans back in our faces. Went out this morning with a party and saw four enemy killed with grenades and another bayoneted. It was sickening, but I suppose I'll get used to it. Everybody does. Private William Tuttle, age 19. So many soldiers on both sides of the Great War lost their lives that it was called the War to End All Wars. Unfortunately, this would not be the case. On the morning of November 11, 1918, armistice was declared, fighting stopped and the guns fell silent. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, World War I came to an end. The following year, President Woodrow Wilson declared November 11th Armistice Day, a day to honor the veterans of the Great War who had sacrificed themselves in defense of their country. A special tomb for an unknown veteran of World War I was dedicated two years later at Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia. The unknown veteran was buried as a symbol of all the soldiers who had sacrificed their lives so that others could live. Eventually, 27 different states made November the 11th a legal holiday, 
but it wasn't until 1938 that the United States Congress finally made Armistice Day a national holiday. But then the following year, in 1939, Germany invaded Poland to ignite another war. This time, the fighting was not confined to Europe. It spread across the entire globe. World War II made the First World War look small by comparison. When after six and a half years, the fighting was over and all the dead were counted and buried, Americans realized that Armistice Day needed to be expanded to honor the veterans of all wars. And not just those who died. There already was a holiday for that, Memorial Day. Veterans Day would be a day set aside for honoring all the men and women who had served their country in the armed services, living or dead, whether in combat or in a supporting role. Finally, in 1954, President Dwight D. Eisenhower, who as a general had led the Allied forces to victory in World War II, officially proclaimed November the 11th as Veterans Day. In 1968, Congress moved Veterans Day to the second Monday in November, but many Americans thought November the 11th, like the 4th of July, was too significant a date to be changed. Americans came to understand that Veterans Day was special and should always be commemorated on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. In 1975, President Gerald Ford, himself a veteran, signed a bill returning the observance of Veterans Day to its original date. Through the years, hundreds of thousands of Americans have made the ultimate sacrifice for their country. Millions more sacrificed a portion of their lives or careers. On Veterans Day, we honor all of them. Napoleon McCallum was an All-American running back at the U.S. Naval Academy in the 1980s. He was still in his junior year when the Oakland Raiders offered him a big contract to drop out of school and play in the NFL. But Napoleon chose to finish college and then put his football career on hold while he served out his four-year commitment to the Navy. Being in the Navy, uh, afforded me the opportunity to deal and work with people, develop my people skills, develop leadership skills um, that were going to stay with me and help me the rest of my life. I don't know if I had a grandiose ideal of that's why I want to go into the Navy to serve my country, but that's what, what I ended up doing. Napoleon McCallum followed one dream job with another serving four years as a naval officer, and then going on to a successful career in the NFL. There was plenty of times I wanted to do the easy thing and play professional football uh, because it was fun. I'm just a normal person, and that's who serves our country, normal people, people who live in America, who want the nice things in life also. But being in the military, it, it gave me the mindset that I could do anything. Napoleon McCallum found that he could do anything, but he chose to keep on giving. This point in your life right now is the best time to learn everything you need for the rest of your life. Today he works with the Navy Person in Me program to help kids realize their dreams. Veterans are proud to have sacrificed a portion of their lives in service of their country. And many of them have found that they've been richly repaid in the form of life experiences that they would never have received otherwise. Everybody thinks that when you serve in the military, all you do is carry a gun and run through the bushes with your M16. It's a lot more than that. When they test you, they decide after that testing what you're going to be good at. In my case, they decided I'd be good at computers. 
I was a sonar technician in the service, which meant that I looked for submarines. I hunted submarines and uh, was in charge of what's called underwater fire control, which is torpedoes. I was sent to Fort Campbell, Kentucky at 17 years old. I was jumping out of airplanes. When I first left after graduation, I was a bugler, and I spent two years aboard the USS Tennessee, the battleship Tennessee. I decided to get into the Army because I wanted to fly. So I decided that after I checked out how much flying lessons cost that if I could get Uncle Sam to pay the bill to teach me to fly, that that would be the way to do it. I was sent to Lakehurst to be a parachute rigger. And I didn't even know what a parachute was. I had never heard the word before. I was a nurse in the Navy. Air Force and Army. I got this top secret job, which they offered me, which was really interesting because I had no idea what really a top secret job was. And because it was top secret, you couldn't ask anybody. Serving my country just made me so proud. It made my parents proud. It just, it just gave me like a whole new look at, at myself, my life, everything. It was hard and, and tough and it just made me stronger in the end. Three, two, one, booster ignition and liftoff of Columbia on a life sciences mission for Earth and space. Bill MacArthur is a veteran whose jobs in the service were about as exciting as it gets. He was an Army test pilot who got his master's degree in aerospace engineering while in the service. And then he was picked to join the NASA Space Agency. I was selected for the astronaut program in 1990 and had the good fortune to fly for the first time in 1993 uh, on the Space Shuttle Columbia. We spent uh, two weeks on orbit doing a variety of medical experiments using ourselves as subjects. In 1995, I served on the Space Shuttle Atlantis on the second mission to dock with the Russian space station Mir. Then in 2000, I went on my third space shuttle uh, mission. This was on Discovery. Docking with the new space station gave Colonel MacArthur the opportunity to actually walk in space, twice. When people ask, well, what do you do? My answer was, well, I'm a soldier, and the work I do happens to be flying in space. Being a veteran, it's a very significant part of my self-identity. You just know you have done something for the good of your country. It's just something that was inherently good. Back in World War I, all a soldier needed was good feet and the ability to fire a gun. The most complicated piece of equipment he needed to operate was a field radio. As technology developed through the course of the 20th century and communication, aviation, and weapon systems advanced, military service became more specialized. Qualified recruits received special training to operate and maintain these systems. And when they returned home after their service, veterans often discovered that their new skills put them first in line for the best jobs. To go into the, the armed services will repay you with training, with an education, with skill sets far above your friends, uh, your peers, your colleagues. I went to England and Ireland and Holland and Germany, uh, Belgium, Spain, Slovenia, Greece, Italy. To have the opportunity to see the world, to see how other people live and to experience that rather than just reading out of a book. Today's high-tech army won't teach you to track satellites if you can't read. Today's recruits are subjected to higher standards because our nation faces new and more deadly threats in the 21st century. Serving your country is often a family tradition passed proudly from one generation to the next. When I was a little girl, my daddy talked to me about when he served in World War II and the Korean War. He didn't say a whole lot about the horrors of it. He had scrapbooks that I looked at 
but the stories that he told me filled me with pride. I come from a long line of veterans, starting with my mother's uncles and my mother, my father. My uncle was in the Vietnam War. My mother was always trying to remind me that there were opportunities to the military for travel, for education. I came away with feeling a, a, a sense of honor, a, a sense of patriotism. My father served during World War II. My wife was a Navy nurse during the Vietnam War. I have two sons who are currently serving on active duty, both of whom saw duty in Iraq. This is a very important spot for my family. My grandfather, who's with us today, my father, and myself, we all graduated from this recruit depot. So since 1940, Westovers have come through here. When I'm here, I feel like I'm at some special place. Uh, it feels like home in a strange sense. I never tried to influence either my son or my grandson to join the Marine Corps. I wanted them to see it and to make up their own mind and decide whether they wanted to accept the responsibility of that kind of a life for themselves. I saw action in uh, Bougainville, Guam, Iwo Jima, and uh, Pearl Harbor, and the landing at Incheon, Korea, and the capture of Seoul, Korea. Once we started going in there and the North Koreans coming down all over the place, and, uh, we had to confront them hand to hand at times. It was very scary, very scary. And anybody that says that he's not afraid or scared is lying. We were surrounded by battalions of Viet Cong and NVA, and the battle lasted roughly 27 days. There was a lot of death, a, a, a lot of death. Today, at the beginning of the 21st century, the face of warfare has changed. We are fighting a new war, a war against terror, and it's the men and women in uniform who are being called upon to stand between the terrorist and American soil. I'm laying down in the dirt, and I'm looking straight into Dave's face, and the Iraqi walks up behind me, and he hits me in the back of the head with a rifle, and I knocks me unconscious. During the invasion of Iraq in 2003, Ron Young's helicopter was shot down over Karbala. Iraqi militia captured him and his co-pilot, Dave Williams. When I come back to, I'm looking at Dave and the guy has a knife to Dave's throat and he's threatening to cut Dave's head off. The pilots were held for three weeks before being rescued. As these guys are dragging us through the streets, finally we ended up in Samara and uh, a set of Marines decided that if there was a chance we were there, they were gonna come try to rescue us, and you know, we owe our lives to a lot of brave Marines. I've been back for nine days today, I believe. Feels wonderful, and yet at the same time, it feels weird. Like, I feel like I should be going back there. It's great to see all my friends, but I miss the ones that I made over there. Each year at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, we honor and show our appreciation for the millions of brave and selfless Americans, living and dead, who have stood for this country in war and peace. Our veterans. Well, November 11th is just one day, but that one day we should say thank you for a, for a mile away life. Thank you for America. It is probably one of the things that I'm most proud of in my entire life, having the courage to go over there and fight for my country. I was one of the people that raised my hand and took the oath and said that if people have to go and people have to die, that I'll be one that's willing to do it. Veterans Day is just not a day off. It's not a holiday from school. It's remembering those who led the way to protect our country so that we have our rights and our freedoms.
I didn't realize what I was fighting for at that age. I was too young. But now that I'm...